Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Before we start, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Karina Wulandari and you can call me Karina. Welcome to the first session of Islamic Wealth Management class. In this class, we will go through the principles as well as the five pillars of wealth management that complies with the Sharia law. But before we go into the details, it is important to understand the meaning behind the term wealth. So let's first look at how contemporary economics and finance define wealth. As you can see, wealth can be defined broadly as an item that has some economic substance, a value such that the wealth can be used for several intended purposes. But what does that mean in real terms? Well, it means wealth can be anything from cash to real estate. Wealth includes publicly owned infrastructures like the highway, public hospitals to personal belongings such as a car, a refrigerator, and so on. Another definition of wealth is wealth can also refer to the total savings and investments someone has. This happens when savings are turned into investments in physical assets, which help build more wealth in the future. Now, how does Islam view wealth differently using the Sharia perspective? Well, actually, in the Quran, Allah states that there are two perspectives of wealth. The first one is physical perspective and the second one is the spiritual perspective. The physical form manifests itself through the possession of tangible assets or even intellectual property. Meanwhile, the spiritual form of wealth refers to the knowledge or virtue an individual acquires in his or her lifetime, then applies it for the benefit of the society. So as you can see, spiritual wealth in Islam refers to the richness of the soul one's connection with Allah, and the accumulation of virtues, good deeds, and moral excellence. Several types of spiritual wealth are the following. The first one is taqwa. It also means piety or God consciousness. And then tawbah, which means repentance or turning back to Allah. And then there's Qana, which means satisfaction with what one has. Ihsan, which means excellence or doing good. And then the last one is Sabr, which means patience or perseverance. So, isn't it interesting how Islam has a rich definition of wealth? Now, let's start talking about managing wealth. You see, in Islam, managing wealth is not just about accumulating money. It's about ensuring that our financial activities align with the Islamic faith and principles. So what are the stages of Islamic wealth management? Well, there are five of them. Wealth generation, wealth accumulation, wealth protection, wealth purification, and the last one is wealth distribution. Let's start exploring each stage. The first stage is wealth generation. In Islam, the way we earn our income is just as important as what we do with it. For income to be considered halal or lawful, it must align with Islamic principles and ethics. Now let's break down what that means. First, it means steering clear of haram or unlawful elements. Imagine you're offered a job that involves dealing with interest-based loans or even gambling. 
or as a salesperson of alcoholic beverages? You see, in Islam, these sources of income are considered haram. So, it is important to avoid any job or investment that involves these activities as they can harm both individuals and society. Can you name other unlawful sources of income? 2. Practicing ethical business Whether you're running a small business or just selling something online, honesty is key. Islam teaches us to avoid fraud, deception, and unfair deals. Think about it. No one wants to buy something that doesn't live up to its promise, right? 3. Staying away from speculative investments Now, when it comes to investing, Islam encourages us to avoid financial activities that involve excessive uncertainty, gambling-like behavior, or high risk without a clear underlying asset or value. In Islam, wealth generation and investment should be based on real economic activity and should contribute to the society's well-being. 4. Ensuring fair wages and labor practices If you're an employer, it's your responsibility to provide fair wages and safe working conditions. Exploiting workers is not just unethical, it's also against Islamic teachings. And five, choosing lawful partnerships. When forming a business partnership, make sure your partner shares the same commitment to halal practices. Avoid partnerships that involve haram activities, as these could jeopardize both your income and your values. That would be all on the first session about the introduction of Islamic wealth management. See you in the next video. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.